morning, everybody, and we want to thank you for tuning in to our Victory Outreach Cape Town Sunday morning celebration service. And we are so excited this morning. We know that God is going to do something very special, and very supernatural, and God has been moving in a powerful way throughout these last few weeks. And so we know that God is going to do another miracle this morning. So we want you to go ahead and go ahead and start a watch party, or if you're tuning in through YouTube, go ahead and share the link. We want to get as many people as possible to tune into this broadcast. Why? Because this service is special. We know that a few weeks ago we had women's convention and what a powerful, powerful time that the women had coming together for one entire week and God really moved in a special way. And for those of you that tuned in, you know that South Africa was in the house. South Africa was representing at the women's convention. And so this morning we have something very special for you. Instead of us doing a set here, we're going to let you see the set that God allowed us to put together for the women's convention. Powerful, powerful set where South Africa was in the house. So the praise and the worship this morning is going to be very, very special. So get your heart ready. Get your mind ready. We're going to have a great, great time in the Lord this morning. So right there behind that device, let's go ahead and dedicate this time in prayer. Go ahead and close your eyes. Put your attention on God. And let's go ahead and pray this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you that you've been faithful and you've come through for us time and time again. And this morning, use, God, this praise and worship set. God, let the anointing of your Holy Spirit flow through it, Lord God, and minister to the hearts. Get our hearts ready for the great things that you want to do in our lives this morning. Father, we love you so much and we thank you. Let your blessing be upon this time in Jesus' name. And everybody together said amen, amen, and amen. Man, hallelujah.
In this moment of worship right now, he is right where you are, and he's ready to heal your heart. He's ready to restore your family. Oh, come and receive a word from the Lord. Receive a word.
powerful anointing. God has anointed that set. Even during the women's convention, we felt the power of God. And I know again, right here this morning, you could feel the presence of God. God has anointed our music ministry to really create an atmosphere. And I know that that atmosphere is right there in your house. So for a few more moments, just close your eyes and worship the Lord. Come on, for a few more moments. Come on, love on Jesus. God, we love you. God, we love you. God, we love you. Hey, hey. Father, we praise you this morning. God, we give you glory this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you into our house. We welcome you into our situation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right there behind that device, you have a need this morning. You need a miracle in your life. The Holy Spirit is moving. The presence of God is there. Close your eyes one more time and just believe by faith. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that need that breakthrough, that this morning in the name of Jesus, that you would get personal with the hearts and the lives of your people. I pray for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Those that may need a healing in their body, God, I, I pray right now for healing to be released in the name of Jesus. For Lord God, I pray for back pain to be removed in Jesus' name. I, I pray for diabetes to be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for coronavirus to disappear in the name of Jesus that Lord you would show up God bring a breakthrough like never before minister God I, I cast out that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus God I pray for faith and courage and breakthrough to take place in the hearts and the lives of your people this morning thank you God for your faithfulness to our lives do something special this morning in Jesus name and everybody together said Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, if you believe it this morning. Come on, if you believe that you serve a miracle-working God. Come on, if you believe that you serve a God of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a set, huh? What a powerful, powerful set that that was that God had allowed us the opportunity and the privilege to be able to serve on an international level. Our music ministry was rocking. And then we're going to try to get that special to you somehow, the Malibongwe. Come on, somebody. Malibongwe. And the, those moves. Come on, those dance moves. We also were able to not only have a set of praise and worship, but we also did a special during the women's convention that really came out in a powerful way. Why? Because God has given us the best. How many believe we have the best here in Victory Outreach Cape Town? Come on, give the Lord a good round of applause if you believe that God has blessed us. Amen. So again, we appreciate our music ministry, their hard work, and their dedication. And listen, another special thing that's happening this morning is as you're tuning in to this broadcast and you're tuning in from your house or from behind that device, we are also having church right now. Right now as you're tuning in, hallelujah, we are actually at the building, 123 Fort Trekker Road at the Goodwood Mall. Why? Because the president has allowed us to start coming back into the building to have gatherings of 200 people. So this morning as you're tuning in through the broadcast, we're having church right there in the building. Come on, give the Lord a good round of applause. Hallelujah. And so for those of you that didn't know that we were having church, we want to let you know that we are back in the building. 200 people is the limitation, so you have to reserve your space. So that means that you got to go to the website. There's a, a, a little opportunity or a little thing that you have to tap there. It'll send you a form. Fill out the form and reserve your seating so that we can make sure that we have the amount of, of seating uh, that's allocated for the amount of people coming. 200 people per service. We're having two services on Sunday morning, one at 9, one at 11. And so while you're tuning in, we're having church live. Hallelujah. And if you want to be a part of that next week, then make sure you go to the website, make sure you reserve, and let's get back into the house of God and be able to, the Bible says, do not neglect the assembling of the saints. 
and the Lord has allowed that opportunity to get back into action. So if you're excited about that, give the Lord a good round of applause. Praise the Lord. Give us some of those emojis. And uh, we're so excited that God is taking us back little by little. Our homes are receiving men again. Our life groups are opening back up. We're having the support groups here back at the church. We're here this morning gathering 200 people, and we're believing God to continue to take us forward. How many know the year started off rough? Hallelujah. But we're going to end this year in 2020, and we're going to believe God for revival. So give the Lord one more good round of applause. Praise the Lord. And again, we want to thank you for tuning in to Victory Outreach Cape Town this Sunday morning. And so what I want to do at this time is I want to receive this morning's tithes and offering as unto the Lord. And so if you could go ahead and get a hold of your device, praise the Lord. And as you're getting a hold of that device, there's a snap scan uh, opportunity that's there at the bottom of the screen. Or you can go to our website for all the different options that we have for God's people to stay faithful with their finances. And many times when we think about finances, we think about our tithe. We think about our 10% that belongs to the Lord. How many know the Bible says that the 10% is holy and it belongs to the Lord? In other words, it's not ours. Tell yourself. I don't know if you have a neighbor in there, but tell yourself it's not mine. Come on, somebody. The tithe is not mine. Hallelujah. It belongs to the Lord. And as Victory Outreach Cape Town, we have really, even through the pandemic, we've seen us be faithful with the tithe. But with the offering. The Bible doesn't just speak about tithes. It also speaks about offering. And you know where the blessing is? The blessing is in the tithe and the offering. The tithe and the offering. And I want to read a portion of scripture as you prepare this morning. The Bible says, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commanded as right, commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And so here in this portion of scripture, you know the, the, what, what the Bible is speaking about is Cain and Abel were both working the fields according to their, their area. One was working the field, one was working with the animals. And at the right time, they both brought in an offering. And the offering that Cain brought was not accepted, but the, the offering that Abel brought was, was accepted. Why? Because Cain brought in an offering from his own understanding. But Abel brought in an offering according to what God expected from him. So this shows us that God's not only looking at the tithe, but God is also looking at the offering. In the book of Malachi, the Bible says, bring your tithes and your offerings. So you see the Lord is looking not only for the 10% that belongs to him, but the offering is an act of faith. The offering is, I'm going to go a little bit further. The offering is not only am I going to give you what you expect, Lord, as far as the tithe, but I'm going to honor you with my offering. Why? Because everything I have comes from the Lord. And how many love to bless the Lord? How many know God has been a blessing to us? And as he's been a blessing to us, it is our privilege and, our, and, and, and out of gratitude in our heart, we continue to not only bring our tithes, but our offering. And I believe it's the offering that also gets the attention of God. And so this morning we want to challenge you to be faithful not only with your tithe, but also with your offering. How many could say amen to that? Amen. Go ahead and close your eyes. We're going to go ahead and pray for this morning's tithes and offering as unto the Lord, being faithful with our tithe, but also blessing the Lord with our offering. Father, this morning in the name of Jesus, God, we want to live according to your word. And Lord, your word is very clear when it comes to the tithe and the offering. I pray that we would establish a conviction inside of our life, a conviction like Abel, that when we bring you an offering, we want that offering to be pleasing to you. God, I pray this morning for those that are being obedient with their tithe and those that are stepping out in the offering, that your blessing and your provision would continually be upon the lives of your people. I pray for prosperity in the name of Jesus, and that, Lord, we would continue to give you all the honor and all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody together said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you as you give to the Lord this morning.
Hallelujah. God has been faithful to us. Amen. And uh, God bless you as you have been faithful in your finances. And at this time, I want to go ahead and make mention of a few announcements that we have of some exciting, exciting things that are taking place right here in Victory Outreach Cape Town. The other day, we were live by the fire. We had all the pastors, and we were there, and we gave a big announcement. Praise the Lord. And it turned out to be a bigger announcement than we expected. Praise the Lord. We didn't know that at that time that the doors were going to open up for us to be able to bring back the people into the church. So we were able to announce that we were starting our Sunday morning services again. But also at the same time that we announced our Sunday morning services, we also announced and declared. We made a declaration that the month of October is going to be a month of revival. How many are excited for some revival to take place within our lives? And we know that the pandemic has not been easy. And many of us have been separated and feel a little disconnected. And we're believing God in the month of October to pour out his spirit like never before. It's in the darkest times where revival has taken place in the past. And how many know in the midst of this dark time, God could pour out revival one more time? If you believe in revival, I want you to go ahead and clap a little bit. Get yourself excited. Praise the Lord. And so we are declaring the month of October to be a month of revival. And we know that we've been praying and fasting throughout these last 10 days. So we want to challenge you and encourage you to stay faithful to your prayer. Stay faithful to this time of fasting. Why? Because if anything is going to happen, it's going to happen first in the spiritual realm. And so we need to stay separated and continue to storm the gates of heaven, trusting God for a month of revival right there, right in the month of October. And then also in lines with that, we're also having a prayer watch that will be taking place uh, a second watch prayer will be taking place on October 2nd. That'll be at 9 o'clock to midnight. And we're going to be doing it right here in the building. Hallelujah. Right here at 123 Fortrecker Road. Where saints are going to be coming in. And we're going to have a time of prayer on October 2nd. So don't miss out on that. And then also we're going to be planning some other ways for you to be involved with that. For those of you that don't feel comfortable coming into the building, we're going to figure out a strategy to also keep you connected and a part of this second watch prayer, October 2nd, meaning that we will be praying all the way from 9 o'clock at night till midnight that day. And then also, again, with the month of October being a shift to rise revival, all of the services, October 4th, October 11th, October 18th, and the 25th will all be geared towards believing God for revival. Why? Because we're going to believe God for signs and wonders. We're going to believe God for healings. We're going to believe God for miracles. We're going to believe God for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like never before. So get ready to come in. And not only we're we doing it through the, through the online services, but right here in the building, we're going to be believing God for a tremendous, tremendous outpouring of His Spirit for a whole month of revival. Why? Because we're believing God to end this year strong. I know it's been a rough year. Come on, somebody. But how many know this year ain't over? And how many know God can still get glory in the midst of this year? 2020 can still be the best year of your life. Why? Because God is able to turn it around, and the month of October is going to be our month. Amen? And then also directly after the service, we have our kids gang service that will be taking place at 1030. Make sure that you get your kids and get them to be able to tune in to that. And then also, we are still in run for hope mode. Hallelujah. And by faith, we're still not only beating the women. Come on, somebody. That hasn't been too hard. No, I'm just playing. Hallelujah. We have been winning all uh, run for hope long. Unless they did real good. I don't know. They haven't given me the recent numbers. But well, last I checked, the Lions were winning in our local uh, Cape Town competition. But remember, the UTC, my God. God, the UTC has been on fire for this run for hope. And just with that small group of people, they have raised so much money. Pastor Sam, Sister Daniela have done a tremendous, tremendous job with the UTC. But how many know we're the base? Come on, somebody. We are the base, and we can, we have to be able to stretch ourselves. And just recently, we passed them up. Hallelujah. And now we got to stay in the lead. Somebody say stay in the lead so that we can continue to be the base, my God, that God has called us to be and run for hope. So, again, we're raising finances to reach souls 
all throughout the country of South Africa. This pandemic has not stopped the vision, and we need the resources to be able to get the job done. So let's continue to end this strong. October 17th is the final day. Let's stay faithful. Let's continue to raise as much finances as possible so that we can have the resources to continue to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Well, go ahead and put your attention to the screen. We got a few video announcements for you. God bless you. This October, we're coming together, preparing for one purpose, a united we can effort, Run for Hope, in 12 different locations. Run for Hope is more than just a 10K or 5K run. It's a movement fueled by passion, courage, hope, faith, and inspiration. Join us for this year's Run for Hope of Unstoppable Help. Register today at runforhope.victoryoutreach.org. We are in it to make a change. Praise the Lord. So we have some exciting things taking place right here in Victory Outreach Cape Town. And if you need any more information concerning some of the things that are taking place, you can always visit our website and they will keep you up to date with the exciting and great things that are happening right here within our church. And so this morning, I know you are excited for the word and I believe that the Lord wants to really, really speak and minister to us in a special way. And this morning we have the privilege, we as a ministry here in the country of South Africa have the privilege to have a UTC right here in South Africa. And there's only five UTCs all over the world and we right here in South Africa have one. And so this morning we will be having our directors. They're gonna be uh, with us this morning and uh, Pastor Sam is going to be speaking and ministering. And God has used him tremendously throughout the years in different places. And we know that he has something very special. That God has put something very special in his heart for this morning. And so open up your heart. Get yourself ready. I want them to go ahead and come. Pastor Sam and Sister Daniela, our UTC South Africa directors. Come on and give them a good round of applause. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we are so excited to be with you Victory Outreach Cape Town, we miss you, and I'm excited that we're starting church today, right? We're so excited. We're here on camera, but we're also live in the building. But we just want to thank God for what he's doing in our urban training center. Uh, again, we're in pandemic, but we've not let it stop us. The students have just been moving forward. We've been doing an online campaign. We're still reaching souls. We're still training leaders. We're still raising up young people for the vision. And we believe that like never before, like Pastor Chuck said, revival is going to take place. And it's going to be with the third wave. And so we just want to encourage you. I'm doing a quick plug for the Urban Training Center that we're opening our doors October 10th. We weren't able to receive students during the pandemic, but we're open once again October 10th. I know it's just, you know, a couple weeks away, but we believe, God, for miracles that you're able to come in. If you're from the ages from 18 to 35 and you say, I have a call on my life. I want to separate my life. I want to, I want to answer the call of God on my life. I want to be part of that revival we want you to be part of it, so see us. You can message us. You can talk to any of our leadership, but we'd love for you to come in October 10th. It's coming. We're excited. We know that this is just the beginning. With just our small group for a moment, three weeks, I just want to take our three weeks in pride. We were at the top of the country for Run for Hope, so we are raising up leaders with heart that are backing up the vision, that believe in what God's doing in this ministry, so we thank you guys. We love you so much, Victor H. Cape Town. We can't wait to see you in person. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, church. It's good to be here this morning before you. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to minister this morning. But right before I minister is we have a short video that we like to present. And it's about our urban training center. And just like my wife shared, is that you feel the call of God. We want to challenge you to come to UTC South Africa. And God is busy molding and shaping men and women for the ministry Many of our alumni are doing awesome in the different parts of the country, also different parts of the world. So I want to encourage you to check out this video. And I pray that God put it on your heart to enroll October 10th. God bless you. But we have to know God has called us. It's not your leader that called you. It's not your pastor that called you. It's not your parents that called you. My friend, God called you by name. And that's good news for some of us because some of us were never called for anything, never picked for anything, never liked for anything, but God saw us fit 
called us by name and said, though they may reject you, I have accepted you. Not only have I accepted you, but I got a calling on your life, whether you're sitting in the front row or you're sitting in the back row. I came to tell you, God has called you by name. Praise the Lord. Welcome back, family. And listen, once again, I just want to take time to thank the Lord for my salvation as I minister here this morning. And September is a special month for me as this marks uh, 23 years of serving the Lord and it has been an adventure. And so I'm truly blessed to be able to minister right here at my church, Victory Outreach Cape Town. I love you and I pray that God will bless you here this morning. I also want to take time to thank our founders, Pastor Sonny, Sister Julie, I know it was just her birthday on the 19th. So Sister Julie, if you're watching, happy belated birthday. We love you. We appreciate you. And we want to thank you on behalf of me and my wife for allowing us to lead in the Urban Training Center here in South Africa. And then last but not least, I want to go ahead and thank the pastoral team here at Victory Outreach Cape Town. I serve with some of the greatest men of God that I've ever known. They love God, they live sacrificial lives, and they care about you. So I pray that you uh, continue to pray for your pastors, keep loving on them, because they are doing a great, great job. And so I am excited to minister here this morning. Right there where you're at in your home, if you have your Bibles, I want to ask you to turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23, and we're going to look at verse 11 and 12. And this morning, I'm going to be speaking on the subject, relentless leadership. Relentless leadership. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and read, and then we'll pray. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Herorite. And the Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines. But he, talking about Shammah, stationed himself in the middle of the field, he defended it and killed the Philistines, so the Lord brought about a great victory. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning. God, we thank you. God, we love you. We ask you today to be with us as you want to raise up relentless leaders here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, today I want to speak to you on the subject, relentless leadership. Now, in this story, we see these are the last words of King David. And he begins to recount the great exploits of his men. Men he was able to train and develop to be powerful warriors. And Victory Outreach, I believe our greatest legacy is not going to be the buildings we erect or the ministries that we build. But I believe our greatest legacy will be the men and women that we have developed to relentlessly stand for God. Now, the word relentless defined is continuing without becoming weaker, remaining determined, never giving up. And I believe Victory Outreach Cape Town's greatest accomplishment will be the raising up of relentless leaders who passionately advance the vision and preach the gospel all over the world. See, I don't know about you, but I believe that this church right here is busy raising up relentless leaders. We're not raising up casual Christians. We're not raising up men and women who just casually serve God. But I believe we are raising up relentless leaders like Shama. that when the enemy comes, we stand in the middle of that field and defend what God has given us. See, when we look at the ministry of Victory Outreach, I see the DNA of relentless leaders who have defied the odds by trusting God for the impossible. From humble beginnings in East Los Angeles to becoming an international ministry whose reach spans all over the globe. Now here in the text we find Shammah, but not too much is said about Shammah in the Bible. But what he does remind me of is of a victory outreach man or woman of God. Because I see the characteristics of a relentless leader. We see here in this short text that he was a warrior that he was loyal to the vision, that he was a territory taker, that he lived to please the king. He was a man who put his trust in God. He was willing to lay down his life for the cause entrusted to him. Although he had all these great qualities, though, I believe that he was not born with these qualities, but that he was a man who was developed by his leader. I believe when David met him, 
it was in a cave, when he was in trouble, when he was in transition, when he was at a low place in life. But I thank God that David was able to speak life into him and train this man to be relentless when it counted the most. It reminds us of how many of us came into the house of the Lord. We were in distress. We were broken. We were depressed. Some of us were addicted. We were battered by life. But I thank God that when we came to Victory Outreach Cape Town, there was a relentless leader in the church. There was a relentless pastor in the church who began to train us, who began to equip us. Right there in that life group, he began to speak life. She began to speak life into you right there in that gang service. Come on, gang. I'm talking to you third way. It took a gang leader getting behind a pulpit. It took a gang leader calling you. It took a gang leader to begin to work with you. It took a relentless leader. To build you up into who you are today. See, they taught us how to get a hold of God and discover God's plan for our lives. Now, Victory Outreach Cape Town, we are a relentless people. We don't give up easy. We're not a weak people. We are a people that are determined to see God's plan fulfilled within our life. And today I want to share with you three qualities of a relentless leader that I see in this text. Number one, Shama was relentless about protecting the spirit of revival. See, I believe Shama was able to fight even though he was all alone and the people that were with him began to flee. Is he stood because Shama understood that he was fighting for the spirit of revival. When something is so good, it's worth fighting for. Come on, somebody. How many remember before Christ? You might have had that boyfriend or that girlfriend, and somebody looked at her. Somebody looked at him. Come on, somebody. You were ready to fight. Come on. You took off your earrings, young lady. Come on, somebody. You put on your dookie. Come on now. You were ready to fight that girl right there at the, at the mall, wherever you were at. You were ready to fight You were re- because you had a good man. Come on, somebody. You had a good girl. Somebody looked at your girl. You were ready to fight because you knew that it was something worth fighting for. And Victory Outreach Cape Town, I came here this morning not to tickle your ears, but to remind you that we must protect the revival that we were birthed in. Victory Outreach is not just another church. We're not just another storefront church. We're not just another organization, but we are revival. I want to declare to you today, we are revival. See, for over 50 years... God has sent our ministry into the inner city to pick up dead things, to pick up broken things, to pick up distressed things, and to begin to put them back together. So when the enemy came and tried to take this field, all of a sudden Shammah said, how dare this enemy come and to begin to try to steal the revival of my people. He was able to fight for that revival. See, Shama was committed to keeping the revival alive. And today, Victory Outreach, as you're watching from your home, wherever you're watching around the globe, you might be in Nigeria, you might be in Kenya, you might be in Mexico, you might be in San Diego. I don't know where you're at. But listen, we cannot allow the spirit of revival to die. I don't know about you, but I've been itching to hit the streets. I've been itching to see people come to the feet of Jesus. Why? Because there is a revival inside of me. Revival is not a building, my friend. Revival is not just something we say, but revival is in you. And when you have life in you, you want to breathe life into dead things. And today I want to declare to you like Shama, he understood what he was fighting for. You got to understand what you're fighting for today, Victory Outreach. We are protecting the spirit of revival in our church. See, just like David who defeated a generational giant, we have a leader in Pastor Sonny who has defeated and continues to defeat giants who try to destroy our generation. He's been fighting to keep our vision alive. Come on, somebody. This vision is not a man-made vision. 
But this vision is a vision that has come directly from the heart of God. And I want to remind you, I don't know about you, but I love the things that God loves. I love the things that God begins to associate with. And as men and women of God, we need to be relentless leaders who fight to keep the spirit of revival alive. When I look at our founder, I am encouraged that he's not only in Panama, he's not only in Guadalajara, he's not only in Cape Town, but he's always looking for new territory. And just recently he announced he wants to start a third wave church right there in the heart of Los Angeles. Oh, I don't know if that excites you, but I see my leader want to start a church. That causes me to not want to shrink back, but to fight for the spirit of revival. See, we must protect what God has given us. We must protect what God has entrusted in our hand. When I look at myself, why did I come to Cape Town? It's not because I wanted to hike Table Mountain. It's not so I could go to Cockies and eat a parcel of fish. It's not so that I could go on the scenic route and take pictures of the whales there in Hermanas. I came here because not too long ago, my mom was a drug addict. Not too long ago, my mom was going to the connection. Not too long ago, we were homeless. Not too long ago, we were destroyed. But all of a sudden, when she came through the doors of Victory Outreach, it was a free women's home that she came into. They began to clean her up. They began to teach her about the things of God. And all of a sudden, I got my mom back. And when I got my mom back, and I began, to, I began to say, man, if God could do that for her, what could God do for me? And when the, when the opportunity came to come to the mission field, I said, man, how could I say no to seeing revival in South Africa? How could I say no to doing my part to be a part of this vision? And today, you got to understand, church, we need to keep on coming back with the vengeance We've been locked up too long. We've been locked up for five months in our homes, going to work, coming home, going to the shop, going home. We hadn't been able to do street rallies. We hadn't been able to receive men and women in the home. But I don't know about you. We need to keep the spirit of revival alive. I wish I had a hot church this morning. I wish I had some people that were on fire for God, that it still burns in your heart when you see a drug addict, when you see somebody out there carrying a gun, when you see a homeless person, when you see somebody that's in need does it still break your heart somebody say we need a fight for the spirit of revival the second thing that I want to share with you is not only did Shama relentlessly fight for the spirit of revival but he relentlessly pursued the vision with passion see Shama understood that God had a vision for his life and he was constantly pushing, not giving up. We must continue to keep the passion in accomplishing the vision before us. I want to remind you today, my friend, that you have a place in this vision. No matter how long we've been locked down, our spirit must be relentless. See, our church is open. And it's time to get your passion back. See, it is right here in this ministry. Come on, somebody, where we begin to get our life back. It is right here in this ministry where you got your family back. It is right here in this ministry where God began to do great things in your life. Don't you dare let no virus, don't you dare let this lockdown steal the passion for the mission God has given your life. I want to remind you today. That you need to get back in your ministry. You need to get back in the area of your passion. If you're called to preach, you need to preach again. If you're called to serve, you need to serve again. If you're called to give, come on, don't you dare withhold your giving. I know we hadn't been able to come together, but listen, it's open now. We're here. You need to register. You need to bring the tithe, bring the offering, bring it. Why? Because this is the place that God has called you to. Victory Outreach Cape Town is our church. Don't you dare let the enemy steal your passion. You're part of this vision, my friend. You're part of this vision. It's time for you to raise up. Let's relentlessly reach souls. Let's relentlessly reach the broken. Let's relentlessly take cities for Jesus. 
no matter what our passion is, we need to accomplish that, that God has called us to. Now the opposite of relentless is relaxed. In Judges chapter 5, 6 through 8, talks about the time of Shamgar and the condition of the warriors. In the time of Shamgar, son of Anna, and in the time of Jael, it says public roads were abandoned. Travelers went by back roads. Warriors became fat and sloppy and no fight left in them. Then you, Deborah, rose up. You got up, a mother in Israel, and God chose new leaders. See, I believe right here, like Shama, Deborah had a passion for the people. And when God was looking for a leader, if a man was not available, then he looked for a Deborah. Oh, today, listen, I pray, warrior, I pray, man of God, that you have not lost your passion for souls. Because if you don't stand up, God will raise up a woman. God will raise up a woman to preach the gospel. God will raise up a woman to teach the gospel. God will raise up some women, some lionesses. Come on, somebody that are not afraid to do battle with the enemy. The Bible says the warriors grew sloppy and out of shape. Victory outreach. We cannot lose our passion for souls. We can't grow fat and sloppy. We can't just sit around business as usual. We can't sit around looking at the wall. But we need to have a relentless passion to accomplish the mission that God has for us. When I think of relentless passion, I'm reminded of a great leader in this great country by the name of Nelson Mandela, who for 27 years was in prison for what he was passionate about. And when he was released, was later elected as president of South Africa. You see, he was relentless in his passion for the people, no matter how long he was in prison. Now, I know the five months seems a little long, but when you look at one of our leaders here in this country, 27 years in a cell could not steal his passion. 27 years going in and out of that cell did not begin to steal his fight. And I pray today, Victory Outreach Cape Town, that these five months have not stolen your passion to sing on the worship, to serve as an usher, to teach children, to work in the gang, to work on the evangelism team, to lead in that victory home, to lead in that life group. We need a people that are passionate. Can I get an amen? You see, Mandela never lost his fight. Victory outreach, we can never lose our passion to see broken lives restored. There's many great churches. There's many different organizations that do a lot of noble things. But to me, I've given my life. Pastor Chucky's given his life. Pastor Dre, Pastor Hendrick, and countless leaders in our ministry have given their lives with full passion because they believe in the drug addict. They believe in the broken family. They believe that God is able to do it time and time again. Can I brag on Jesus a little bit? Can I talk about my Lord? Oh, I don't know about you, but God has been rescuing drug addicts since 1967. God has been restoring families since 1967. God has kept our children off drugs. Come on, somebody. God has kept us in our right mind. God has given us health. God has given us air to breathe. Oh, I don't know about you, but our God is a God that's never dropped a pass. He's never missed a goal. He might not be on your time, but he's on time. I said he's a good God this morning. He's a good God. And I want to remind you, if we serve a God that's never lost his passion, if we've had leaders that have gone before us like our founders and our pastors then don't you dare lose your passion see we can't lose our passion and lastly as I get ready in just a few moments to close as the worship team gets ready is that he relentless he relentlessly refused to lose see Shama refused to give back the territory God had given him See, because Shama understood he was a territory taker. I don't know about you, but we've been down too long. We've been down too long. We, I've been getting withdrawals. I've been getting withdrawals. And, and man, I, 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 I don't want to give back territory. Every time somebody says, my, I don't know if I'm going to open my life group this time. Man, I, I get a little frustrated. I begin to get a little bit irritated. I begin to agonize. Why? Because we, we've been down too long as a people. We've been oppressed. We've been depressed. 
We've been all kinds of things. Come on, somebody. But, but, but I refuse to lose. I refuse to give back territory to the enemy. I refuse to close down shop and go back home to San Diego. No, I am here to stay. This is my assignment. This is my home. This is where God has called me. Just the other day, we got a little dog. Come on, somebody. Why? Because this is our home. And I refuse to give back the enemy our territory. I don't know about you, but we've paid a heavy price. We've paid a heavy price in this country. We've paid a heavy price in the ministry. We've sold land. We've sold cars. We've given up jobs. We've given up finances. Why? Because we've paid a price because it's worth it. You got to remember that it was here where you were rescued. You got to remember it was here where God began to do that work in your life. Some of us came in disgusted and busted come on we came up tore up from the from the floor up beat up from the feet up as they say let me keep it old school come on somebody we were messed up but how many know now we're blessed up oh hallelujah see it was here where you graduated the home it was here where we preached that first sermon it was here where God touched us it was here where we got our sons and daughters back it was here where we got married. Come on, somebody. And it is here where our kids will grow up and become powerful men and women of God. See, we must refuse to give the enemy what doesn't belong to him. I pray in this, this time, these last five months, you haven't given the enemy what doesn't belong to him. He doesn't, your voice doesn't belong to the enemy. Don't start singing all them old songs. Don't start seeing, don't, the, the second church uh, had, had to go into online. I, I pray that the Judy Boucher CDs didn't come, came out, that, that the Michael Jackson CDs then came out. I, I pray that, that you didn't start losing your, your, your spirit, that you didn't start losing your, your spiritual man, your spiritual woman. See, because your voice doesn't belong to the enemy. Your voice doesn't belong to Barry White. Your voice doesn't belong to Nicki Minaj. Your voice doesn't belong to Drake. Your voice belongs to God. Don't you dare give him. Come on, somebody. Don't you dare hook up with that wild boy out there, girl. Don't you dare hook up with that wild man out there, girl. Come on. Don't you dare do that. Why? Because you belong to God. I pray that you are staying loyal to your soil. See, Shama knew that in the natural, it just looked like a field of lentils. But he knew these lentils will raise up a powerful family. Let me share with you some facts about lentils. Lentils are an excellent source of B vitamin, iron, magnesium, potassium, and zinc. They're also a great source of plant-based protein and fiber. Lentils contain a broad ra range of beneficial plant compounds which protect against chronic diseases such as heart disease and type 2 diabetes. These polyphenols in lentils may also play a part in improving blood sugar levels. Lentils may protect your heart by supporting weight loss, preventing homocysteine accumulation in your body, and improving cholesterol and blood pressure levels. See, Shama knew that these seeds called lentils would be beneficial to the future of his people. Likewise, there's a field that we have right here at 123 Vortrecker. Come on, somebody, where spiritual seeds are sown in our hearts as we come into the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. These seeds are the word of God that protect our lives. They guard our heart from getting disease and sickness due to the challenges of life. They help us shed the weight of sin in our life. See, this is our house. I don't know about you, but this is my house. I've given too much to turn back now. I've given too much to, to be relaxed. I've given too much to throw in the towel. And Victory Outreach Cape Town, if you're watching this today, I, I dare you. I dare you to, to put on your mask and get into this house. I dare you to make your reservation. I know it's going to be a little inconvenient putting on your mask. 
But how many know that when you are called by God, it doesn't matter what you have to do to get there. You will get there. This is the place. The time is now. You are the one, my friend. God has called you to be a relentless leader. See, in our house, we can't afford to give the enemy territory. Some of us are just one service away from backsliding. We're one service away from going to Club 151, as Pastor Henrik says. Some of us are one service away from going back to Long Street. Some of us are one service away from going back to Paulsmore. We are one service away from going back into the enemy's territory and working for him. So you got to understand, we need to refuse to lose and give back the territory that God has given us. Why do we fight to keep our ministry running strong? The reason is because there's a generation who's following after us. There are souls on the other side of our battle. When I look at my children, when I look at Pastor Chucky's children, when I look at the children in kids gang, is how many know that we can't give up because they're looking at us. They're looking at us. They're looking at us to stand strong. Whenever there's fear, whenever there's doubt, the children will come to his mom or to his dad. So you got to understand you can't give back that territory. That's why we as pastors have been working so hard during this quarantine. We have been working so hard delivering food parcels. We've been recording services. We've been on Zooms discipling and on WhatsApp. Why? Because we understand that we cannot allow the enemy to steal what God has put in our hand. See, although the last months have been tough as the worship team comes, we refuse to lose. But how about you this morning? Will you be a leader who refused to lose? Will you be a leader who is relentless? That you will not give up, that you will not cower in the moment that we need you the most. I pray that we are leaders that stand strong. See, I want to declare to you that you're called by God. Doesn't matter if you preach on this podium, doesn't matter what you do in the house of the Lord, but God is looking at your heart. When God was looking for a king of Israel, all the men that, that, that had the equipment and had the skill were brought before him. But God was looking for that one that didn't have an outward appearance. He was looking for that one that was right there in his home, raising his family the right way, relentless about not allowing the enemy to come into their home. See, I want to declare to you there's still more territory to take. What about Bonteville? What about Langa? What about the southern suburbs, the northern suburbs? How many know that Port Elizabeth is still waiting? This virus might have delayed us, but it hasn't denied us. East London is waiting. I have a young man in my training center that says, Pastor, if I ever get an opportunity, I would love to crack open East London. Durban is still waiting. Peter Marisburg is still waiting. You know, I was able to help a young lady from Peter Marisburg get into our Pretoria home all through WhatsApp. And now she's living in the women's home right there helping Sister Raja and the team. And she wants to come to the Urban Training Center. We don't even have a church in Peter Marisburg. But Peter Marisburg is waiting. Kenya is waiting. We, we constantly get Facebook messages from Kenya. Kenya is waiting for somebody that, that has it in their spirit to refuse to lose. Nigeria is waiting. Nigeria is phoning Pastor George and, and they're saying, man, when, when, when is Victory Outreach going to come? We, 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 there's a cry going out there. See, Shama understood that he had to have the refuse to lose spirit. Victory Outreach, it's our time. Today I want to remind you that we're called to be relentless. We cannot shrink back. Too much is at stake. I don't know about you, man, but I didn't come here to just be a tourist. I came here to be a territory taker. And right there, as you're watching behind that screen, you are a territory taker. I don't care how hard the enemy has hit you this season. 
I don't care what's going on in your life. You are a territory taker. I'm prophesying to somebody. Some of you feel like you can't do it. Some of you feel like, oh, it's too hard, Pastor. Pastor, the devil's been on me. Well, he's been on me too. I've been tired. I've had so much negative thoughts try to get me to quit. But I thank God that I look to men like Shama. I thank God I look to my leaders like Pastor Chucky. Come on, coronavirus couldn't stop him. Disease couldn't stop him. Nothing could stop him. But he said, I'm called by God. And we need a leaders today that say, I will refuse to lose. But the only way, listen, the only way we could do it is when we rely on God. In the text, it says the Lord brought about a great victory. And today, yes, we need these characteristics. But the most important characteristic is reliance on God. Listen, today, you may have lost your fight. You may have lost your fight. You might have even lost the battle. But I want to encourage you today that you didn't lose the war. God is still with you, my friend. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you've done it with. There's hope today. There is hope today for you. All you got to do is call out on his name. All you got to do is call on his name. His name is Jesus. All you got to do is call on his name. He's with you, my friend. You might be in a hospital bed and it doesn't look too positive. Well, listen, God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. There is an anointing on your life. Listen, if you feel like you can't go on, just... Just begin to stand right there in your living room. Stand. The Holy Spirit is here. I'm broken myself right now. There's a Holy Spirit anointing right now on this broadcast. And God is going to set you free. If you've made a mistake, God will deliver you. He'll cause you to rise. Maybe your passion has been low. God is able to restore your passion. Maybe the enemy has been getting the upper hand in your life. I want you to know that God can come and refuel you so that you can be all that he's called you to be. And as they sing this song, I want you to put your life back in his hands and ask the Lord to make you relentless. Relentless sounds like a, like a heavy word. But relentless just means I'm determined to be close to God. And so listen, you may say, Pastor Sam, I, I feel weak. I don't know if I could do it. Listen, you don't have to do it. All you need to do is rely on the Lord. Rely on the Lord today. He's with you. Just lift your hands right there as they sing this song. I believe the Holy Spirit's going to touch you.
praise the Lord. Well, listen, right there where you're at, I really believe the Holy Spirit. I feel broken on the stage right here myself. And listen, I know that we've been in a season of lockdown. We've been in a season that it hasn't been an enjoyable experience. But I want you to know God is for you. He's not against you. He's able to cause you to be that relentless leader. Like I shared in the beginning, Shammah had his hang-ups. I believe Shammah was one of the ones in the cave. He was probably the most broken one. But I, I'm thankful that his beginning is not mentioned when David is on his deathbed. But his ending is. And so today I want to declare to you, listen, that your current condition does not determine your destiny. There's a great destiny that God has for you. Mom, dad, young person, grandparent, single, married, it doesn't matter. God loves every single one of us. And there's a great, great destiny for you. That's why we broadcast these service. We don't do this for fame or reputation. We do this because we love you. As a pastor, our greatest joy is when people win in life. And so that's my desire today is to help you. I'm not here to focus on your mistakes. I'm here to focus on who you can become. And so today, maybe like I shared, your faith might be weak. Maybe the enemy's been getting the upper hand. You've been feeling like deserting. You might have even feel like leaving the church. Well, listen, it's time to come back. Come back to your destiny. When you hit this carpet, when you hit that, when you walk up those stairs, listen, you're going to feel the anointing of God. I believe some of you are going to be broken in the parking lot because for too long we've been boxed out. But it's time to come on back. And so I want to pray for you. Father, I come before you and I thank you for my family, God. Lord, this beautiful family here at Victory Outreach Cape Town. God, these are true warriors, relentless warriors, relentless leaders. And God, I know we've been through a, a tough season, a, a season of uncertainty. But God, the one certainty has been your love and your power. And so God, I ask you right now for those that may feel like their faith is weak, those that may have had a setback, I pray, God, that you will begin to cause them to rise. I love the scripture, God, that says that your mercies are new every morning. And so today, God, on this beautiful Sunday morning, God, I pray that you begin to build them up, God. Build them up. Cause them to rise. Help them to pick others up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And one last thing I'm going to do is listen. Maybe you're watching this broadcast and you're a young man or a young lady. And you don't know the Lord. Or maybe you're a backslider today. Well, listen, I'd love to lead you back to Christ. Come on home. I want to welcome you back to the house of the Lord. Or welcome you to the kingdom and let you know you're called for greatness. You're a champion. And all you do is say a simple prayer asking the Lord to come into your heart to forgive you of sin. John 3.16 tells us that God's, he so loved the whole world. Not just American, Mexican, South that he the whole world. So that whoever believes on him will have everlasting life. He gave his son for you. He gave his very best for you. And today, listen. As a pastor here at Victor Outreach Cape Town, is I love to lead you in Christ. If you're tired of running, if you're tired of doing your own thing, if you're tired and you need a brand new start, today's the day that God can do that. He loves you, young man. He loves you, mom. He loves you, dad. He loves you, uncle. It's your day. He could deliver you in an instant. He's powerful. So if that's you right there in your house, right there on your device, if you want to say this prayer, I'm going to ask the worship team to back me up. So I want you to share this, this simple prayer with me. I want you to bow your head right there where you're at. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I thank you for this day. For this. I ask you to forgive all of my sin. Jesus, I know I'm called by you. By you. And I thank you thank that you died on the cross died. and rose three days later so that I could be free. I've been running for a while, but I'm ready to come home. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you've said that prayer, we love to connect with you. You can comment on the comments there. You could, we have our number on the link there. Connect with us. We don't just want you to say the prayer and then not come to the house of the Lord. 
to get developed. We could do online discipleships. We have so many different ways, however you feel comfortable. But the most important thing is that you gave your life to the Lord. And so on behalf of our team, welcome to the family. I love you. I pray that today's message really blessed you. Share it with a friend. Have a great week. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Chuck. Praise the Lord. Come on and give Jesus a good round of applause. Amen. Amen. What a powerful, powerful message. And I really feel stirred in my heart as I was listening to the word that is, was being spoken, that we do have to have a relentless fight, a relentless passion that we're not going to allow the enemy just to come and push us around. How many can say amen? And amen. Listen, this morning we want to do something very special. If you've been tuning in to our broadcast and you've been tuning in maybe for the last six months and you're a little newer to Victory Outreach, we've put something in place for you. We're going to go ahead and put a Zoom link. Well, it's going to come up on the chat right now. And if that's you and you say, you know what, I want to be able to get a little more connected. I've been tuning into the services. I've loved the preaching. I love the music. I love the vision. And I want to get a little more connected. We want to encourage you to go ahead and hit that link. There's somebody right now waiting for you. And they're waiting in that Zoom room for you to be able to come into that room. And they're going to be able to, to share a little bit more with you and connect with you a little bit. And get you a little more connected to the family of Victory Outreach. And so what I want you to do is that Zoom link has come up there on the chat. We're going to go ahead and sing a fast song. And as we sing this fast song, we want you to go ahead and feel free. You're six months and less been connecting here you love what love what's taking place we want you to hit that link go into that zoom room and get a little more information and get a little more connected with the ministry of victory outreach let's go ahead and sing a song and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll dismiss we're not dismissed just yet we're going to release our new people here and they're going to go ahead and click that link and go into that zoom room let's go ahead and sing a song praise the lord We hope that you enjoyed that message and you've enjoyed the service this morning. Remember, we are back in the building. And so if you're tuning in this morning and you say, you know what, I want to make my way to church next week, go to our website. Make sure that you reserve a seat. We're going to be a set up here. We're going to have a powerful, powerful time in the presence of God. We're going to be kicking off our month of revival. So you do not want to miss out. It's going to be a tremendous, tremendous time. Go to the website, reserve that seat. Let's get back to the house of God. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And we can't wait to see you throughout the week. God bless you.